Hello and welcome to A Closer Look. My name is Gail Tatum. With me today is our new Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, Dr. Robert Hassler. Thanks for joining me today. Sure. We finally have a chance to catch up. It's been You've been with us just a month, two months, nearly. Almost month two months. Half, almost two months. So you have your sea legs? Getting there. A little bit <laughs> getting, getting there. there. Yes. All right. I think people haven't had a chance to get to know you yet. And so we're going to talk just a little bit about, about your past and about where you've come from and your work experience. And then we want to talk a little bit about some of your visions for North Penn. Good. Okay. Sure. You came to us from Northampton. Yes. And what did you do there most recently? I spent six years at Northampton, and okay. I was in the position of assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, K-12. to All right. Now, tell me a little bit about Northampton. How big is it compared to North Penn? It's about half the size of North Penn, about right. 6,000 students. Okay. And um, growing rapidly, more of is a it? rural setting, okay. in a sense, than North Penn. What's your major? Is there a major town or city that's in the center of that area? Northampton is a small borough, and then it's okay. surrounded by about six townships. Okay. All right, so that's similar to us. You're drawing from different municipalities and have those issues, but it's a smaller student population. Yes. All right, yeah. so you were an interim superintendent there, and you were an assistant superintendent for six years. Right, yes. And your primary focus was curriculum. Yes, curriculum and instruction and school improvement. And school improvement, what does that mean? Well, taking a look at our programs in curriculum and also our instructional programs and then coming up with a plan to improve student achievement um, okay. by getting a good baseline on where we were and where we wanted to go. Okay, that's interesting. And you came to Northampton. Did you come through the ranks in Northampton or were you hired for that position? <clears throat> I was hired for that position. Okay. Uh, prior to that, I spent six years at Brandywine Heights School District just okay. outside of Kutztown as an elementary principal. Right. Also curriculum coordinator, K-12, to and in charge of public relations. So. Did you wear those hats at the same time? I tried to. <laughs> I tried to, hard. but it, it was good experience uh -huh. and, and preparation for work in central office. Yeah, it would be. That would be wonderful. All right. And you are from that area. You, you and I were chatting er earlier. That's that's home. Was your hometown area, and you were educated in that area. Yes. So this is you're you're really getting closer to the city here, coming oh, down yes. into the North Penn move. area. Was a big move for yes. you. Well, we're glad to have you. So that's really great. Thanks. Um, for, uh, your position here at North Penn is a new one for us because before you came, for many, many years, we had separated the elementary and the secondary uh, perspectives here and, and we had a, a man who supervised the elementary teachers and the elementary principals and all the school issues and someone who <coughs> looked at secondary. But you're the first person in a long time who's had that kind of K-12 to perspective. Can you tell me about that? I, clearly, it's part of your background. You've that's what you've done before, mm -hmm. although with a smaller, uh, smaller student body and fewer buildings. Tell me why you think that works or what you think about that kind of K-12 look. Well, I think the issues are basically the same, whether it's a smaller district or a larger district like North Penn, but I think the importance of one person working K-12 to is that I can work with the elementary principals, I can work with, and also the staff, mm -hmm. and also the middle school mm -hmm. principals and staff and high school, and coordinate our programs and our instruction K to 12, which a lot of times, because of being focused on either one level or the other, doesn't happen when you have separate yeah. directors or separate assistant superintendents. So I can make sure and work with the staff to make sure that our program at elementary is preparing students right. for what our program will be as they move through our grade levels. Okay, so for instance, in a subject area, say math, I don't know, I'm just thinking, and mm -hmm. you, you, have, you are able to have a perspective of the math curriculum and then see how it's important that kids lo learn certain things at certain levels and are prepared to move on through. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Most of the problems, I think, in schools occur between the levels yeah. where there yeah, isn't that coordination. Right. And I, I've been in four different districts, and I've heard the same thing in, in, in three to four of those districts, that we just didn't have the coordination. Yeah. And, and I think that's why a K-12 to position is really important. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited to have this viewpoint because we haven't we haven't had that before. And we, I agree with you. I think that parents are yeah. hopeful that it that it will uh, it'll just give a broader view of things. Now we have supervisors. We have we have had <coughs> subject area supervisors who have brought that perspective to some of our subject areas. Not all because we don't have supervisors. You are working. Um, I mean, the magnitude of your job is is quite 
huge in my view because you you have uh, so many people who are reporting to you and, and in addition to all the principals at our 17 schools you have the subject area supervisors mm -hmm. but do you, how do you find that that works well it's a great advantage to have subject area supervisors um, what I can do though is work with them to again make sure that we can focus on what we want our programs to be and also work with them to make sure that we can provide any overlap that that should be between mm -hmm. health or uh, between an area like science and mathematics okay and I think that that's really important I, I think just the word focus is is the key that yeah. uh, as supervisors work with department chairs and and administrators are involved also in the staff that we can all get a sense that we're moving in the same direction mm -hmm. and whether it's in mathematics or whether it's in language arts mm -hmm. we have a I would say a, a constant way that we're going to approach improving program and curriculum to make sure that it's it's happening across the board the way that we would like it to okay do you find um I mean, you have so many people that you're, I mean, clearly you're new here, so you have a lot of p faces and names and people to know and work with, but are you generally pleased with the people that you've met, and how has that gone in terms of getting all these players together and helping everyone? You're changing a perspective for all of us, <coughs> you understand that. You're the implementer of change yes, here. I guess, <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> um, it, it's been great. Um, I only have to learn two more names and I'm over, <laughs> no. Um, I've spent the first month and a half uh, getting out to buildings and trying to meet um, um, the staff in each of the buildings That's and good. also the administration. And uh, what I've found so far is uh, North Penn lives up to the reputation that, that I knew of before I came here. Um, quality staff, people are, are working extremely hard and um, it's I guess so I can say I've been really well received in the buildings Good. and I think they want to see a connection between central office that yes. I think a position like this can really can really offer. Yeah, you are a really important link for these people because you, uh, the, the level of your position is so high and, and your input is so critical to decisions uh, at the very highest level and Im impact, impacting the board decisions as well that you become the vehicle I, I would assume for concerns from the building. Through the and, I've asked the, and I've asked the the bu building principals as well as the staff to please let me know of any know. concerns they have. I, I mean, the bottom line is what happens in the classroom. Sure. And so what I need to do is listen to the staff and the administration so that we can improve the programs for, for students in the classroom. Right. Well, that's a big job. It is a big job. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, when we were talking earlier and chatting about some of the things we would discuss. You mentioned uh, results-based approach to education. I said, what are what are some of the things <coughs> that are important to you? What, what would be something you would you would want? And you talked about an, a results-based approach to education. Tell me what that means a little bit. I think it's just basically knowing where you want to go and taking a look at how effective you are. Um, utilizing state assessment scores, your standardized scores, tests that students take every day in the classroom, mm -hmm. um, their finals, and, and determining are we where we want to be as a district in the area of achievement. Okay. And then backing up from that and saying if we're not, or how, where and how do we want to improve, what must we improve? If we know that our, for example, let's say if our writing scores aren't where we want them to be, mm -hmm. then what does that mean to the classroom teacher in every grade level as far as what we need to do to improve? Mm -hmm. What does it mean in the area of instruction? Mm -hmm. uh, what do we need to provide for the staff in the area of staff development so that they can implement what we want to accomplish in the classroom and then the end result being students performing better? And I think one of the things that we haven't done in education is really focus on the bottom line and that's achievement of students and how well we're doing. Obviously a test is a test that's given on one day and there's a lot of factors that that's go right. into it. Mm -hmm. But if we take a look at where we're at and then build goals and I would say short-term goals. In other words, what are we going to do in September and October to get us to reach our goal that we, where we want to be, let's say next June and then monitor that and say how effective are we doing, what must we change, and then build October, November. Sometimes what we do is develop a goal for the whole year. We want students to write right. better, but we never back it up. No, I and would think that would be much better because that a two-month time frame is very manageable somehow. Mm -hmm. And in terms of planning for what goes on in the classroom, that must help a teacher. Mm -hmm. Have you found that to be true? I think the, mm -hmm. the biggest thing that you find is that in a two-month period, mm -hmm. the teacher can see how effective our goal was and then we can see where do we need to go next or what do we need to modify whereas waiting a whole year 
you really don't know until the year's over yeah, how effective you've been. So this way you have kind of signs along the way. Yeah, this is working. We can we can modify this a little bit for the next two month period, or, mm -hmm. or that's enough of that. We'll move to this way. Yeah. Huh? Have you d did you do this in Northampton or <coughs> or some variation on this? Yes, we were starting you to did. develop short term goals, and it really fits with what I see at, at North Penn, uh -huh. with the awareness that the staff is working on towards what the state assessment is, yes. what the requirements are. I believe the next step is to say, okay, now that we know where it is we want to be, how do we get there? How do we do it and how do we get there? Well, that's exciting. That's right. exciting. Yeah. And so this, you'll, you will help to give the leadership to this, or are already giving the leadership, I assume, to this, and, and will help all the rest of us learn what to do in order to have this be an effective, effective way to teach our kids. Yes. Do you find that principals are receptive to this when you talk about this with them in generalities? Very much so. I okay. think everybody really wants Sure. Everybody really okay. wants to reach that mm -hmm. bottom line sure. of improving achievement, and I think that's what I need to do in my position is provide that, that focus in that right. direction so it, it carries right through the system to the building level administration, to the classroom teachers, and, and right into in, the student, to what the students are doing in their curriculum. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Stay with us, please. see our children succeed, but setting easy goals for our kids creates the toughest obstacle they'll ever face, because succeeding in the real world isn't easy. Help the effort to raise standards in America's public schools. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. Sally wants to be a surgeon someday. Maybe she'll operate on you. Now, would you like a free booklet of simple ways you can help improve her education? Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. Do you think you have the power to change the world? Yes, I teach. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. Look. With me today is Assistant Superintendent Robert Hassler, and we've been talking about lots of exciting things that are going on in our in our uh, offices at North Penn Schools. Uh, Bob, we were just talking about your your philosophy of results-based uh, approach to education, which is which is very interesting, and I, I think, think it's so. I think it's uh, something that will have, <coughs> a, have a real positive impact here, and that's exciting. Tell me about a major aspect of it that deals with the evaluation component. You you and I were talking a little bit about that. One of the biggest parts is taking a look at where you're at and then determining oh, I guess that's true. what where do you, you do, yeah. what do you do. And I think one thing, again, in education that is important um, is to take a look at very carefully where you're going to go so that we don't jump on bandwagons, um, okay. programs, activities that we read about and hear about and make a change and not know that the change is really going to get us what we want. Um, okay. I, I, I would. I guess I would frame my philosophy and hmm. let's take a look at what's in place and how do we improve what's in place before we just change to something new and think that's going to solve all our problems because in most that's cases probably, it doesn't. Yeah, that's probably an easy trap for people because it's easy to say, well, look what they're doing here. Why don't we just do that mm -hmm. before we look at what we're doing? Mm -hmm. That's good. So you say what we do first is take time and really evaluate our own situation. Yes, and, and make sure again mm -hmm. that you take a look at the research, mm -hmm. you really look at what's effective Mm -hmm. and what's been proven to be effective, not what someone is trying to either sell you or right. um, trying to tout as the next best thing. And right. really kind of back off a little bit and say, what is it we have in place and okay. how good is it and how can we improve it? In, s in a sense, what that says to me when I hear you say that is that you need to trust your own professionals and your own teachers and your own educators. They need to trust their instincts a little bit and be honest about what they're doing mm -hmm. and not be so quick to, to give up on something, to jump to something else. And that's where I think, again, in, in the role that, I, that I'm filling, um, 
why communication is so important and, and that I can open up the lines of communication between the classroom teachers and the curriculum supervisors and myself mm -hmm. so that we can get their input on what's working and a lot of times that doesn't happen in districts it's yeah. someone on high has an idea of how to improve um, the curriculum and program and it really in the long run doesn't improve it as much as we right. want. So really, instead of having everything be top down, you're talking about being open and having all of the administrators be open to what we're hearing, what's going on in the classroom, because as you said, that's, that's what the bottom line mm -hmm. is. What's happening in the classroom is what we need to look at. And I really think Fighting. looking at things like how do we improve the instruction to get where we want to be. And, and that's not to say that instruction is not no, I where we want that. it to no. be. And you may say, look, we're doing a good job here. Mm -hmm. This is fine. But what help do you right. need as a teacher? If we're going to now be measured on how effective students write and it's not, it's going to be done with students writing mm -hmm. versus filling in bubbles uh, right. on a test, what does right. the staff need in order to get students to be able to perform that way? And that's okay. why staff development is so important and, yeah. and getting teachers the help and the training or continued training that they need. Yeah. You believe in staff development, don't you? Very much so, but again, it needs to be focused. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're looking at how do we improve writing, we identify if we identify that as one of our greatest needs, mm -hmm. then we really need to focus staff development on reaching that bottom line and reaching the results we want. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's really good. So all of this evaluation and the revision of the programs that you would see go towards improving instruction. That's that's your bottom line in a sense, isn't it, or your goal? That and also looking at the at program. But I think a lot of times okay. programs that are in place are okay. And the instruction is also okay. okay. How can we fine tune each one of those to get us where we want to be without throwing out everything that we know works mm -hmm. in both instruction and in program? So in a sense, it's really taking a very Good careful job. careful look, yeah. but a slow look rather than jumping too quickly. Yeah. I this think all of us... This isn't hurried, is it? No, oh, no. no. I think all of us in education, though, would say that you know, we've seen things come around and go around and rather than just continue to get on that cycle there's a lot of good things that we've implemented and have done how do we improve them to to provide the programs students need for the world today versus the world twenty years ago Yeah, um, you must find it hearing you talk about these things makes me think about the responsibility in a sense that you would have and others uh... who are in a primary uh role such as yours where you're looking at curriculum and instruction in such a broad way. You have a responsibility to, to, to be well read about what's happening in education and to, to, to be reading information and journals and things that, that talk about all of this. I, that takes some time, doesn't it? It takes time, and, but one of the things I've found that's probably the key to everything are people mm -hmm. skills yeah. and being able yes, to work with people and, yes, and expose them to, to ideas. Right but then get them to say, geez, this is how I can incorporate this into what I do. Right. Um, so it's really getting, it's really motivating in getting people to, to want to improve, yeah. to continue to improve, and just really feeling good about what they do day-to-day yeah. -day in the classroom. It's nice. Well, you yeah. have your work cut out for you. That's interesting and exciting. <laughs> Let's shift a little bit. Okay. and talk, We've talked a lot about instruction and uh, your hopes there, which I think are exciting. Let's talk a little bit about the other side of of uh, students' life and the life of families involved with the schools, and that's really the co-curricular component. I know because I build the school calendar every year with the input from the schools, and we know just by all the input we get that there's tremendous amount of activities going on all the time mm -hmm. in our schools at every level. Um, we hear about the sports activities at the secondary level. They draw a lot of a lot of press and interest from the community, but there's much, much more. You were saying, for instance, you're, you're going to be going to one of the elementary schools soon to, for a fine arts festival. Yes. And uh, the demands on you are tremendous for this sort of thing. I mean, you are a K-12 man here with a K-12 interest. Talk to me a little bit about how that, how that fits. Well, I think we all know, obviously all going through school, how yeah. important that other side of school life is. Right. And uh, it's very important that I get to know all the opportunities that students have at North Penn. Mm -hmm. And so I've really asked all the buildings and parent organizations to get me involved and find out what's happening. So my calendar is filling, <laughs> up, filling up very fast. and uh, That's good. It, it, it is. And, and again, it's to take a look at what are those types of things that, that make student life what it should be. Uh -huh. And, you know, we look at those as kind of celebrations, and, mm -hmm. and it really does 
fit in applying what they're learning in the classroom too. Yeah, yeah. Often it's linked to the co-curricular and the instructional components are really linked. And there's often. a lot of a lot of lessons to be learned from co-curricular that yeah. can also be applied in the classroom on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I think. I I was. Um, I uh, think uh, reading something recently about the math nights that we've had. I don't know if you've had a chance to go to a math night, but this is an example of a really fun time for families in elementary mm -hmm. schools when they come and they solve puzzles together as families. And it's it's a good time and it's fun, but it's also carefully linked to the math curriculum. And that's just one example, but mm -hmm. uh, there were also just nice evenings for people to, to come together as families. And I think it communicates <laughs> to the public also what's happening in schools rather yes. than rather than people thinking or assuming what may be happening they yeah. can actually see the types of things that are taking place in the classroom yeah i think that um it seems to me it would be my view that as the assistant superintendent you are uh, the man who uh, also along with the superintendent bears the the uh, view of the district as a whole everything that's going on the real life of the a district in this hopefully you can give us as much time as you can for that. I mean, that's a big demand with that kind of a view. Well, it hasn't taken long to fill my calendar. <laughs> and, uh, People have... The, the holes are plugging up very quickly, but yeah, it, yeah. It, it's another part, I think, of the district reaching out to the community. Yeah. And my, my attendance at as many different um, activities as possible I think are important yeah it really is important I think I think it's important for people having access to you let's talk about that a little bit sure. I mean you um, you don't have direct impact with uh, in interaction with parents uh, on a regular basis right. but right. your philosophy is such that you are accessible to people yes um, right? um, as I tour all the buildings and get a chance to meet um, home and school associations right. and and parents that are volunteering yes. in the buildings I've kind of reached out and said please get me involved and invite me to activities and um, evening activities and Good. Saturdays and it, it's important for me to also understand and become part of the community so yeah. that as we're looking at how do we improve our academics and co-curriculars I have a sense of where the community is too right. and in a district this size it's hard to say what it's hard to put a finger on what community may be but That's right. it's important to get to as many different functions as I can. I think North Penn is an interesting community and I think it has been historically a community that has really embraced the schools because there isn't a central town mm -hmm. uh, there are many towns the schools have kind of been the linkage and have provided that way for families to meet each other and you could live in Montgomery Township and your child's best friend could end up being someone a way across town and and that's great and that's a way to bring this community together so the, the schools are particularly critical I think in, in that role Definitely. And, and you will find that here um, it's a friendly community I think people will welcome you I hope you're finding that already oh yes are that's, you yes I think that's the one thing that yeah. is has become very apparent in the short month and a half that I've been here is yeah. that it's a great place and the people are extremely friendly and and yeah. welcoming I'm sure that your, as much time as you can give us will be absorbed by uh, events and programs that we have in the schools and, and uh, all the things that we can offer here. Well, I think that's a great introduction to you and to, to who you are. I don't know if you have anything else you, you care to say. I think we've covered most of it. We're glad you're here. I think so. And, um, but my office is open to anyone okay. who wants to t talk to me about curriculum, program, co-curricular, right. or whatever. And I have a few open evenings yet. So, uh, <laughs> so they should call you. Yes. All right. Well, good. I, thanks for coming. I'm glad we had this chance to talk. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. This has been Gail Tatum. With me has been Dr. Robert Hassler, our assistant superintendent. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>